Welcome to today's video. We have something fun planned for you guys. We are not only gonna go lobstering, but we're going to teach you how to catch a lobster with a net and a tickle stick. You guys have seen recently, we were lobstering in Bimini with pole spears, and in the past you've seen some fun adventure lobster videos. However, we've never taken the time to specifically teach you guys exactly how to do it. So if you would like to do it, or if you're ever in an area where there's lobster around and you wanna give it a try, now you can. My name is Emily, the man is behind the camera. Kona is back at the house today. Gale Force Mom is Gale Force Mom is with us today, and welcome to our channel, Gale Force Twins. talk about is the gear that you need for catching the lobsters and then we'll talk about the gear that you need to catch the lobster if that makes sense so we are going to be free diving now you can scuba dive for lobsters and the technique technique we're going to teach you applies to both free diving and scuba diving but i would imagine that a good portion of our viewers are probably just going to want to be free diving and snorkeling and looking around for some lobsters so we're going to start with free dive fins guys there's a difference between regular fins like snorkel fins and scuba fins and free dive fins. You can see these are much longer and they'll help you get to the bottom because there's a lot more power behind a longer fin like this. The fins, I wouldn't say are totally mandatory. If you're a newbie and you have some fins, don't necessarily worry about investing in these. But if you are going to be getting into free diving and doing lobster more often, you might wanna look into a good pair of free dive fins. Next is booties for your fins. So whether you're wearing regular fins or free dive fins, we usually like to wear some sort of buoy or a sock. Today, I just have some socks on, so I'll either wear a sock or a little booty. This is just a neoprene booty, and it just prevents any blisters and rubbing from your fins on your feet. Next, we have some gloves. Now, the gloves, I highly, highly recommend. At the very least, go get yourself a pair of gloves. It doesn't have to be any kind of fancy glove. Just go to any dive shop or a tackle shop. You can ask them, hey, I want some gloves for lobstering, and they're gonna point you in the right direction. Guys, lobsters have spines, coral can burn. If you touch anything, you're gonna wanna have a glove. Then we're gonna have a mask and snorkel. This specific mask and snorkel is meant for free diving. Again, when it comes to the mask and snorkel, if you have a regular mask and snorkel, by all means, please use it, get in the water, get going. In the future, if you want to invest in a specific mask for free diving, then you can do that. I have the little GoPro attachment on mine and the free dive mask, it's basically a lower profile and you can see it has smaller, basically holes for your eyes to look through. So it's more of like a narrow mind focus, kind of like you're hunting versus the tr traditional scuba mask. It's gonna be bigger and have some clear sides to it. So you can kind of see what's going on around you. Lastly is the weight belt. Now this is something that I do not want any of you guys using unless you are comfortable and confident in the water. The weight belt can definitely cause some anxiety because you will have weight on you. Now guys, if you choose to use a weight belt, do not use so much weight that you have to try to stay afloat. You should not have to try to stay afloat. It's basically just giving you sort of like neutralizing your buoyancy because in salt water, you're more buoyant, you're going to float more. And this kind of helps you get down to the bottom and stay at the bottom. But again, this is for someone who's already experienced with snorkeling and a little bit of free diving and wants to invest in something else. Next, we're gonna talk about the actual tickle stick and the net. Now you guys can see pretty standard, pretty typical, pretty much all your tickle sticks are gonna look something like this. They might be blue, they might be silver, they might be really cool looking. Now, the end that has a slight bend in it, that's the end that you're gonna be using to catch the lobster with. And the other end, this one has a little grip. Some of them don't, but again, guys, the straight end's where your hand's gonna be. And then the bent end is where you're gonna go after with the lobster. Then we have our net. Kind of self-explanatory. You hold the net where the handle is and you use the portion of the net to catch the lobster. So we're gonna demonstrate first for you guys on the boat outside the water. We're gonna pretend we got a lobster we're going after. And then we're gonna get in and you guys can watch it from underneath the water. All right guys, so we're gonna use the sunscreen as the lobster. The yellow part is the head and the tentacles and the orange part is the body and the tail. Now a lobster will typically be in some sort of ledge or a hole. So this part of a lobster, you won't really be able to see, but what you will see is some tentacles sticking out. So that's what we're gonna look for the tentacles and let's say, oh wow, I found some tentacles. Let me try and get this lobster out of the hole. Now a tickle stick is called a stick tickle stick for a reason guys, you're not supposed to jerk the lobster around. You don't wanna be doing this, putting it in its face. You don't even wanna be aggressive doing this. 
you literally want to tickle your lobster. I'm going to dive down at eye level with the lobster, gently and carefully place the tickle stick behind my lobster, and I'm going to kind of tickle him with his tail. And naturally, he'll start to crawl out. He'll start to look at you, be like, whoa, what's that? Then he gets far enough out of the hole, lobsters swim backwards. So that's when he's out of the hole, I'm going to take the net behind him and go like this. Nine times out of 10, he's going to rush backwards, swim backwards, deeper into your net. Now at this point, I've seen a lot of people pick their net up and the lobster gets out. So you, one trick is you actually flip your net over like this and you create basically a twist in the net that kind of prevents them from getting out. The other option, which is what I like to do, is quite literally, which is why I wear gloves, grab the lobster like this and swim to the surface with him in my hand in the net. Now sometimes if you're having a hard time getting your lobster into the back of the net, this is when you can take the tickle stick and kind of scare him back into it and he will again guys swim backwards deeper into your net. Once you have your lobster, you're gonna need to measure it. This is a lobster measuring device. You guys, again, you can get this at any tackle store or dive shop. Just say, hey, I need something to measure my lobsters with. They're gonna point you in the right direction. And this is the, basically the lobster has to, cannot fit in here. If the back of the lobster fits in here, it's too small. Again, when we have the real lobster, we will demonstrate for you. Before I get in the water, guys, I wanted to demonstrate if you do choose to use a weight belt. These are designed so that way if you have a panic attack or you get stuck in bottom, all you gotta do is pull on this and watch. It, it would just fall off just like that. So when you do wear one, wear it nice and snug and do not take this extra and wrap it around, tie it underneath anything, because then it'll prevent it from having the safety of releasing it quickly. All right, guys, so before we begin, let's take a look around. Pay attention to the seafloor, the structure, the rocks, the ledges. That's what we want to see. It's the perfect home for a lobster. The next thing we're going to want to start to look for is tentacles. Now, you're going to see some tentacles sticking out from under rocks and ledges. Wait, I think I see some. Do you see them? Oh yeah, let's freeze frame that. Take a closer look. Those are lobster tentacles. Let's take a closer look. All right, so there's at least five in there. None of those are gonna be keepers. But I do wanna say, if you're new to lobstering and unsure about the size, please go for it. You can measure them once you get them in your net. At least it's very good practice at lobstering. But I know from experience that those are not gonna be keepers, so I'm gonna move on and look for some keeper lobsters. I do wanna add a little pro tip when you are lobstering. If you don't think you're gonna have enough air to catch a lobster, don't rush it. Any forced movement and you'll just stir up the bottom, making the water cloudy and pushing the lobsters deeper into the hole. Instead, we're gonna swim up to the surface, we're gonna take a few deep breaths in and out, slow your breathing down, and then go for it. Don't forget to equalize your ears. On the way down, I like to plug my nose and blow out gently. Here we go, this is it. Remember to tickle your lobster nicely. You see how he's starting to walk out? I have my net ready, and here we go, in the net. Don't forget to grab your lobster so he doesn't swim out. Let's see if this one's a keeper. Between the eye socket and, yep, too small. You see the carapace fits inside the gauge? We're gonna have to send him home. And there we go, back home he goes. Next lobster, here we go. Don't forget to get yourself eye level with the lobster. Try and keep your body horizontal with the sea floor. This guy is probably gonna be too small. Yeah, he's definitely too small. All right, little guy, grow bigger. Oh, check this one out. He looks like a keeper. Remember, tickle your lobster. Watch how he's gonna walk out. I'm gonna guide him into the net. There we go. And then don't forget, grab your lobster. There we go. And I'm gonna swim up with him. Yep, between the eye socket, carapace is bigger than the gauge. He's definitely a keeper. Let's bring him to the boat.
Emily looks for the lobsters in the water. I'll give you guys some tips for lobstering or for the driver or the captain. So a good rule of thumb is always dive with three people. Three people because you want one person on the boat at all times, two people in the water. You always want two people in the water. Never dive alone and you really don't want to leave the boat unattended. So we always make sure there's three of us, whether that's me, Emily, Gail Force Mom, me, Emily, Captain Cam, a friend. We always try to dive with three people. I don't believe you'll find a single dive video, maybe one or two, a couple of just the two of us, but 9.99 times out of 10, you will find three people in our dive videos. So always make sure you have a captain or someone on the boat looking around, especially if, even if the boat's on anchor, you do want somebody, Emily has a lobster. Oh, that's a nice one. This time when she handed me the lobster, he fell out of the net actually. But a lot of times the lobster will get totally tangled in the net. And for her to hand me the lobster, I untangle it and handle the net back takes time. And then she's waiting at the boat and the current's drifting and she's hanging out at the boat, which can be dangerous, especially if there is some seas or conditions. You don't want your divers just sitting next to the boat if they're either not in the boat or out of the boat. So something that's good to do is have her just hand me the whole net with the lobster in it and I have an extra net ready to go. I give her the new clean net and then I work on detangling my lobster in the net that Emily just gave me. And that way you're always rotating nets and you're not spending time next to the boat, worrying about the props, all that kind of thing. Obviously keep it in neutral, keep the motor in neutral when you do have a diver near you, but yeah. <laughs> So I measured them underwater, which is what you have to do. You gotta measure them underwater, and then if they're keepers, you can bring them to the boat. Now, of course, in the boat, it's always, always, always good to double check them. We always have whoever's on the boat has their gauge as well, double checking them. But now that we're out on the boat again, I will show you guys how to measure the lobster. This here is the tail of the lobster right here, and then where it becomes solid and hard from here to here, this is called the carapace or the back of the lobster, and it has to fit outside the gauge. If it fits within the gauge, the lobster's too small. So you guys can see, I'm gonna go between the eyes. There's a hard socket right here between the eyes and the carapace does not fit. Now let's say the gauge was like this and you guys see the carapace fits. Let's say it was right there, just like that. Guys, those are not keepers. It has to be like this. You can see he's clearly bigger than the gauge. Lastly, very important, I want you guys to know not to keep pregnant lobsters. Now, this one is not pregnant, but I will be honest with you guys, it's pretty obvious they'll basically be carrying eggs here. Typically, kind of whatever you picture when you picture like egg, like fish eggs on your sushi, that's what it would look like inside their tail. 
And I have one more piece of information for you. This is a scuba or a snorkel mask as opposed to the free dive mask, which is what I was using. I have a mask like this for scuba diving. You guys can see it's all clear. It's a larger mask so you can see more out of your sides. We can look sideways and kind of see more. So either way, guys, I just want you guys to use what you have. Don't go out there and start buying all this gear. First, just go out, see if you like it. And if you do, then you can invest in some specific gear for free diving and lobstering. I think that covers everything. So now you guys know how to use the tickle stick. You saw, you saw what to look for. You saw the tentacles, you saw the ledges, you saw what the seafloor looked like. I think that's it. We want you guys to get out there, have fun, and stay safe.